What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Lax Records YouTube channel. And this week, we're talking with Tanner Demling, who is the Southeast contributor to laxrecords.com. And obviously, we're going to talk to him about the Southeast and what's been going on in that region so far this season. So we're going to do a quick little update, go from state to state, and catch you guys all up. Let's start now. All right, so I'm here with uh, Tanner Demling. He's the founder of lacrossebucket.com and also the Southeast Region contributor for laxrecords.com. Tanner, thanks for coming on, man. Well, thanks for having me. Um, so we kind of just want to cover, like you, you've been covering the Southeast for a couple, almost a couple months now, and I know mm -hmm. with Florida kind of finishing up their season, there's been a lot going on, not just in Florida, but along the entire Southeast. So mm -hmm. um, just kind of fill us in on what, what are some of the, the teams and players that have kind of stuck out to you uh, over the last couple months? Yeah, so uh, starting in Florida, uh, definitely, you know, top two teams, I think, down there, probably Ponte Vedra and Oxbridge have been the top two uh, pretty much all season. Then, you know, right behind them, you have Jupiter, who uh, state champion from last year, then also a uh, Cardinal Mooney team who is a uh, pretty strong should uh, be able to make a run as well yeah yeah that Ponte Vedra team they've been they oh, seem yeah. to be a team on a mission yeah. this year they are yeah. they're they're dominating teams I mean it's mm -hmm. I guess their only yeah. loss was to that to Lambert out yeah of the only loss is to Lambert out of Georgia haven't lost anybody in state and so that's going to be interesting because I know um, I saw I actually saw something on Twitter today that one of the local news stations was quoting Coach West saying this is probably the sh strongest and most talented team he's had so mm -hmm. it's quite a statement but Oxbridge they they look like they I mean it, they look oh, like yeah. they might be the top two teams by far in the state at least so far yeah. I know uh, Cardinal Mooney is gonna like they but their team I think you're right they they could easily surprise and it could easily be them mm -hmm. in the, in the yeah. finals especially the way the playoffs run in Florida like mm -hmm. once you kind yeah, of get out of those should. regions it's 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 gonna be a crazy finish down there and. Mm -hmm. Their playoffs, depending on when you're watching or listening to this, they could have already been started because their season <laughs> yeah. is pretty much over at this point. Yep. We're already talking about it. it's the beginning of April. Um, so we mentioned Georgia. What's been going on um, around the rest of the Southeast? Uh, so, yeah, in Georgia, you have Lambert. I think they're uh, going on 35-game win streak right now. Yeah. Um, they you know still undefeated, obviously. They've been dominating uh, pretty much all the opponents. And then you also have uh, Lasseter, who is uh, – 12 and 0 as well. Uh, they luckily don't play Lambert uh, in the regular season, so uh, they could easily finish off undefeated uh, coming into the playoffs as well. Yeah, that's another another tough region. I know Lambert is coming off a win over Centennial, um, yep. which was a very very tight game, and I know they held uh, Ryan Syracuse of the Maryland commit to one goal in that game. I mean, mm -hmm. Lambert's defense is always stellar, and I think again this yep. year it's just kind of they're proving that out that that is. That is what they are very, very good at. And, I mean, it's it's hard to score on them, and obviously it's kind of a tough game to win yeah. if you can't score. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, their coaching staff has people ready. If anybody saw the interview I did with Coach Sagal a few weeks ago, then you know they, they have a legacy, and they're working to protect it. They're looking like they're going – they got a shot to go back-to-back. -back. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, for sure they do. I haven't looked I haven't at their schedule, but they're, the longest winning streak in Georgia history is, is 40 games, which was by Lambert. Mm -hmm. Um and depending on how many games they have left, which they, they could actually break that record this year yeah, um, yeah. and go past 40. I mean, that's obviously counting on a lot that may or may not end up happening. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, it's the way they've been playing, it's not out of yeah. the possibility. Either. No, no, for sure possible for them. Okay. So uh, what, what else has been going on? Uh, yeah, so uh, going up kind of the coast here to South Carolina, you know, uh, Wando, they've been uh, – uh, dominating uh, like they usually do. They're, yeah. I think, five-time state uh, champion. Yeah. And then you, behind them you have uh, Philip Mill and uh, Florida, who are kind of the uh, number two and three teams uh, in that state. Some of the like regional uh, I guess state powers haven't really been as good in South Carolina besides Wando this season, so you're starting to see some new names pop up there. Yeah, it's been interesting. I know last year it was uh, the Oceanside Co Collegiate. Um, yeah, I think is it. They they kind of surprised everybody last year mm -hmm. and yep. and won state. And I think they didn't beat Wando, but I think they beat a couple of the more traditional powers mm -hmm. um, down there last year. And then, but yeah, Wando is they're the mainstay. They're yeah. year in yeah. year out. It's it's probably them. <laughs> yep. All right. So uh, you seem to be moving up moving up the coast. So is North yeah, Carolina yeah. next? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got North Carolina up here. So 
Uh, first off, so Christ School, they've been the dominant team there, but they don't play, so they're in the Christian, so they have like a public and Christian, so they're in a different division. Yeah, they're in the private so, school league. Yeah, the private school league. Uh, so luckily for the public schools, they don't have to see them in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, so you have Christ School has been dominating everybody, and then uh, Weddington has been uh, the dominant public school. Um, there and you have Middle Creek, who's kind of been, uh, you know, maybe a little bit less than uh, people thought they were going to be in Lake New Ilman, uh, but they're both up there as well. Yeah, I mean Middle Creek, and um, they were runner-up last year, and then won it all two years ago, which was in the um, 4A division. And Weddington plays yep. in now they're in the, basically where they do the 3A, 2A, 1A. Yeah which is mm-hmm. kind of the combination of all, basically this what they would consider small school, but that's a lot of schools in <laughs> small yeah, school yeah. division. Um, and those two teams just went head to head with Weddington mm-hmm. coming out on top. And they're the two time defending champion um, in, in their conference and middle Creek. I mean, they're, they're still looking pretty good, but that for a, it's a tough one. Cause I mean, you mentioned Lake Norman cause they're in that division as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. Um, and they, they're the ones that beat middle Creek last year. And then Cardinal Gibbons, they've been, they were so dominant a number of years ago. But they've yeah. been a little bit quieter this year. Yeah, they've been, and I think yeah, they've been a little quiet this year. And other people have, I think other teams have, since it's they Cardinal Gibbons last one, other teams have kind of gone off. And so I think people are looking at those teams. But Cardinal Gibbons is not a team that I would count out either because kind of yeah. like a yeah, Lambert sure. out of Georgia, they are known for defense. Their defense mm-hmm. is always shut down. So they they always come ready to play. So I think that foray in North Carolina is going to be uh, pretty interesting, pretty interesting to watch this year. Yep. And then, uh, you know, in, uh, moving over to Tennessee now, uh, obviously Montgomery Bell has been the top team in Tennessee this year. Their only loss is to uh, McDonough out of Maryland, and they lost 19-10, to 10, so not not bad. Yeah, no. Um, no. And there are no losses in the state. They've been dominating everybody uh, by at least, like, seven goals, I think, as I saw the, uh, the lowest margin of victory they've had for in-state team. Uh, and the closest uh, game they played was against Trinity in Kentucky, which was the first game of the season. Um, <clears throat> and you know they've kind of really shot out of a cannon this year. Uh, Macaulay, who's usually pretty high up there, they've uh, started to get into the groove more. They kind of had a slow start. They played some out-of-state teams and took some losses. Yeah. Uh, Memphis University School, also a team to watch out for. In Tennessee, they're always pretty dominant as well. Um, and Memphis University School hasn't lost any teams in the state as well. Yeah, and I think they're getting ready to play um, MICDS out of Missouri, mm-hmm. I think, in two two weeks. Um, I don't have my dates right. But yeah, it's, but I believe it's – no, actually, next week. Um, I think next it's the, ni- the 18th they're, they're playing them, or 18th or 19th. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, I, I don't know if you had a chance. Obviously, we're recording this on a, on a Wednesday night, so I don't know if you saw the news. Out of, I mean, it's probably going to yeah. be the big news with uh, Coach Kemp yep. out of McCallie. Yep. Like, he's stepping down after this year. I mean, he's yep. 27 yep. years. Yep. That was, that's yeah, 27 huge news. years. Yep. That's, uh, for me personally, like, he was one of the first coaches that I met when I started covering lacrosse back in, like, 2009, 2010. So it was I haven't known a world in which Coach Kemp hasn't been <laughs> yeah. a, hasn't been the coach of a Cali school. It's kind of it's going to be kind of weird because um, mm-hmm. they always you mentioned they would go out of state. I mean, traditionally they've gone up to Landon and played teams in Maryland. Like they they fear no one. Mm-hmm. Um, and every now and then I think I, I don't know how many wins they've had over those teams, but definitely they get their teams ready for the state playoffs. Yeah. Which you mentioned Montgomery Bell and Memphis University School, which mm-hmm. they're in that. I think Tennessee is going to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's a private, uh, private school division, and then they're going to have like a public school one and two, yeah, um, yep. to kind of get a little bit more parity in the state. So mm-hmm. you know, but yeah. Montgomery Bell, Memphis University, and McCallie—they're on that private division one, and have traditionally been basically the three teams that are in it mm-hmm. year in and yeah. year out. And, yep. Yeah, so it's it's going to be interesting to watch. But Montgomery Bell has been looking pretty good. You wrote something mm-hmm. um, that came out today for, on uh, Stephen Avery. They're yep. kind of stud yeah. attackmen, so. Um, yep. Yeah, they've been, yeah, he's they've been, been good this year. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So I assume we're going to move over to your your home state and your neck of the woods next? <laughs> yep, yeah. Uh, in Kentucky, so you know, we have two leagues. Uh, so basically Louisville and Lexington. Uh, in Louisville, you've seen the Trinity, St. X been dominating uh, everybody just like usual. Yeah. And then uh, over in Lexington, you have you know, Washington Catholic and Henry Clay who have uh, been doing their thing as usual. Then you have Collegiate in Louisville who's kind of 
uh, right right there uh, behind Trinity and Saint X. They've had some good games. They had some a lot of games canceled early in the season, so they didn't really get started till late. Okay. Uh, but they've been uh, doing some good stuff. They got some good players there. Yeah. Um, now you were at the the Trinity Saint X games, yep. which I guess is a few weeks ago now. Like, well, yeah. Talk a little bit about that. What was that like? Uh, yeah. So that was uh, obviously big big one, biggest one of the year. Um, in Kentucky, and you know, uh, Saint X kind of came out. It took Trinity a while to get adjusted to it uh, on their defense, but uh, they got it in shape and uh, o- almost took the game. Is I believe Saint X had a man up late in the game, uh, and they ca- were able to capitalize, and Trinity uh, could not convert to send it to overtime. So, yeah, really close one. And I'm guessing that's a team that probably going to rematch. Is that probably yeah. a safe bet in the for the championship? Uh-huh. So. Um, yeah, I, I you know I haven't gone back and looked, but is that traditionally one of those? Because I I think about the St. Anthony Chaminade rivalry for years. It seemed like whoever won the regular season did not end up winning the Catholic League title, and they've changed the way that format is a little bit now. But does that have you noticed any trend as far as like whoever uh, wins the regular season in the championship, or is it one team uh, is usually dominant? Uh, so, some use it's like that. Some use it's not. Yeah, like St. X won. I think so. They use. Uh, Three years straight in the championship. I can't remember if Trinity won. Uh, I think it was back and forth between who won the regular seasons in those years. And then Trinity lost one in 2017, and Saint X has been on a roll since then. So yeah, okay. Um, so just kind of wrapping up. Um, is there any players that have kind of because we mentioned Stephen Avery with Montgomery Bell a little <laughs> bit earlier? Is there any other players? Because I know usually every week you do um, uh, basically player of the week for for us uh, for the southeast region is there anybody that's kind of stood out like the name just keeps popping up over and over every week and we know we can't write about the same kid every week so you yeah, gotta, you yeah. Gotta mix it up even though sometimes they make it hard to do it is anybody like that's mm-hmm. really stood out yeah well i know uh dylan Huss kid going to georgetown out of uh Ponte Vigio. i've heard his name a lot this year yep. and then uh written about this kid a few years ago a christian uh I believe it's t- uh goalie out of uh, oxbridge academy kids yeah. like humong is built Looks like Scotty Rogers at 16. Um, he's you know, been hearing about him a lot this year as well. Yeah, and he actually, when I did the uh, the best plays of 2019, he had that amazing save, um, and you wrote about right. it, that amazing save yep. cross-crease dive against Bullis, which obviously is like, mm-hmm. I mean, Christian's a, you know, I think a Ohio State commit. Um, yeah, so Ohio State correct commit. me if I'm wrong, yep. but um, – yeah, that was an amazing save, and obviously he's been doing it. Like he's a name. Like he's one of those kids for me that it feels like he's in his fifth or sixth year because <laughs> yeah. he was so he was so good as a freshman that his mm-hmm. name just kept popping up. So now it's like, all right, he's in four years, but I've been hearing about him for so long that <laughs> it yeah. just feels like he's older than that. So, uh, well, that was great, Tanner. I really appreciate kind of catching us up around the southeast, and I know for you're basically the first one done. Um, by benefit of the Southeast, yeah. like for the reports. So we have probably only got like maybe another three or four weeks. Uh, when does Kentucky mm-hmm. start their playoffs? Uh, usually first week of May, I believe. Okay, so a little bit longer. I know Florida. Yeah. Um, I saw some teams tweeting today that this is their last regular season game tonight. Mm-hmm. So they're winding up, and I think their playoffs starting. They have an extended playoff series as well. Yeah. So it takes, a, it takes a few weeks for them to play out. But they're usually the first ones done. But after Florida goes out, then it's a mm-hmm. little bit of a domino effect after that. Yep. So, uh it's gonna get a little crazy here from here on out with uh, with the playoffs and the one and done. So uh, it be some. It's always the fun time of year when everything resets. Everybody yep. goes back to everybody goes back to zero this time of year. Uh huh. No. All That's right, fine. Tanner. Well, um, let everybody know where they can find you online before we let you go. Uh, so you can find me uh, at Tanner underscore Dimwing on Twitter as well on CrossBucket dot com. Right. And I'll have links to everything uh, below. So Tanner, thank you very much. You have a good one. Right. You did. Thank right. you. Bye.